greetings and salutations everyone welcome back once again or for the very first time to the farts and crap show where it's your host danjo here and i am re-downloading cyberpunk 2077 to my ps4 pro because we got version 1.3 i'm going to be going through the full patch notes and this is a massive update so if you guys would rather just check it out for yourself there's the url at the bottom of the screen or in the description of this video but in case you're watching this on a platform that doesn't show the description of the video there it is i'll leave it up screen for a few more seconds and let's go ahead and dive right into it because there is a lot to go over and i'm gonna be only skipping the kind of like spoilery stuff Alright, first up, I have my coffee, good to go. <laughs> Additional content, we got free DLC, that is correct. So, first off we have Johnny Silverhand's alternate appearance can be enabled in settings in the Additional Content tab. Uh, and a list of all the free DLCs can be found in the main menu under Additional Content, so that's pretty cool. Multi-layered Sin Leather delta jock jacket luminescent punk jacket both are available in the stash in v's apartment after receiving a message from victor after completing the ride they're of rare slash iconic quality by default crafting specs to craft higher quality will also be unlocked <sighs> archer quartz bandit available as a reward or for purchase depending on choices made by the player after completing Ghost Town and then receiving a message from Dakota or Rogue. If you haven't received the message, make sure to be in the Badlands area and move further away from Dakota's workshop. Dakota will also need a couple of days to contact you. Improvements. Improve the minimap zoom level when driving so it's more zoomed out and easier to navigate. Great addition. Automatic love. Screen with pictures of sky and angel would be bleh, will be displayed substantially longer, making it easier to choose between the two. Added a button which allows to reallocate the distribution of perk points on a character's skill tree. Very nice. Increase the number of slots for auto saves from 10 to 20 and for quick saves from 3 to 10 across all platforms. Great stuff. Added database links to journal entries. Uh, added an accessibility option for center of screen dot overlay which helps with reducing slash avoiding motion sickness it can be enabled in settings interface center of screen dot overlay uh, fixers will now message v to offer a car for purchase less often uh, improved the screen space reflections effect so it looks less grainy on consoles and on lower visual setting qualities for PC. Um, added a filter for quest items in the backpack. Uh, quest item tags from miscellaneous job items will now be removed after finishing associated quests, allowing to sell or drop them. Right? It is now possible to rotate V in the inventory with a mouse. Uh, players will now properly be able to craft a quick hack even if they once crafted it and got rid of it. Um, added a comparison tooltip for cyberware. Uh, improved a notification when buying cyberware and not meeting the level requirements to equip it. Uh, it's now possible to upgrade crafting components in bulk, which is a godsend. I love that. Added new sleeping spots for Nibbles in V's apartment. Um, uh, icon on a disposal crate will now turn red when player picks up a body instead of being grayed out. Uh, landmine icon will now be grayed out after disarming it. Um, it's now possible to use an elevator while carrying a body. Happy together. Barry now has an updated, more unique appearance. That's your neighbor at the that lives ne next to your apartment. Um, base items will now be highlighted green like other components if it's present in the inventory when crafting the same item of a better quality. Okay. Now on to balance changes. Uh, detection time of enemies now depends on the game's difficulty. Enemies on easy and normal difficulties, yeah, yeah, we get it. 
enemies on very hard difficulty and only that difficulty will now be more aggressive when searching around when they are in the altered state. Um, I believe that is when they are... Oh, alerted state, sorry. Um, yeah, I believe that is when they are pretty sure something's going on, but they haven't detected you. Uh, NCPD will no longer react and turn hostile because of dead bodies and open world activities. It's great. Uh, NCPD will now also react to hitting NPCs with a non-lethal weapon. Also great, because you could just walk up to anybody with a baseball bat and wail on them and nobody would care. Uh, adjusted the damaging process when shooting crowd NPCs while in combat depending on distance and weapon used. Which again, is very nice, because uh, some... Well, most NPCs used to be like immortal, basically. Um, don't fear the Reaper improved Adam Smasher's behavior during the fight. Play it safe. Improved Oda's behavior during the fight. Transmission. Improved Placide's behavior during the fight. And yeah, that other stuff. And other behaviors during fights. Um, increase the stats of uh, Jackie's iconic pistols, which is great because they were garbage before. And considering they're iconic things tied to the main story, they should have felt like really good weapons. Uh, the rescue, increase the number of ammo at the beginning of the quest. Okay, introduced minor tweaks and improved balancing of the contagion quick hack. Uh, improved the crafting system, and they made a ton of changes to the crafting system. Um, so that items with random quality scale, uh, scale their quality with the player's crafting skill makes sense. Uh, the level requirement of items now increase with each upgrade, which again makes sense. Um, added more crafting specs for cyberware mods, adding crafting specs for knives available from the start of the game, which is great, especially if you want to use like throwing knives as a um, method of combat. Added the number of components required to craft some items. Um, like bounce back, max stock, quick hacks, clothing mods, and some weapons. Uh, balancing for crafting specs for clothing mods, balancing the number of components required. Yeah, it's just the crafting system is completely rebalanced. Um, optical camo cyberware will now be available for purchase from Ripperdox. Pretty cool. Uh, adjusted price of the sensory amplifier cyberware mod. Uh, rare Unity crafting spec will now be obtainable only during Spectre. It's a thing. Uh, change the price and quality of Carrie's guitar that can be obtained during game, who cares. Uh, gameplay. Fixed an issue where crafting specs from clothing stores were available only during the first visit to a vendor. I didn't know about that. Fixed an issue which occurred after visiting the Nomad camp resulting in being unable to use weapons and quick menu items. Fixed an issue where hacking a neutral target wasn't counted toward the Christmas tree attack achievement. Tutorial windows about skill checks will no longer pop up when the unauthorized prompt is displayed on devices. Uh, v will no longer look down after using fast travel. Uh, adjusted functionality of multiple perks. Uh, hit the deck perk will now work properly on knockdown and staggered NPCs. Can't touch this perk will now grant the player immunity to blind from their own flash grenades. Crazy Science perk will now properly increase the sale price of all items, that's good. Hacker Overload perk will now grant a recipe for the epic whistle quick hack, that's kind of cool. Uh, guitars from New Dawn fades will no longer be disassembled and won't be automatically disassembled when saving the scrapper perk, when having the scrapper perk. Uh, player will now properly have a chance of looting a weapon attachment with the mech looter perk is great that was bugged before uh, minor fixes related to how v behaves when dialogue is fast forwarded fixed an issue where player could get stuck in changing position between crouching and standing after skipping dialogue v will no longer holster a weapon after skipping dialogue while holding it v will no longer be stuck in a loop after skipping a holo call dialogue while falling into water didn't know about that one uh, fixes related to crafting some adjustments to item pricing it is no longer possible to exploit the epic Untitled 18 Brancheski 2021 painting by selling and buying it back. Didn't know that. 
added a quality setting to send best team fragments crafting specs okay rebalancing and added some loot fixed various items that couldn't be picked up uh fixed various unlootable items great I ran into that all the time. Fix the icon displayed when looting shoes. Okay. Fixed a case where Jackie's iconic pistols could be found lying on the street in north side as loot. Okay. Fixed an exploit where a player could loot the XBD dealer's stock from his body after killing him in Disaster Piece. Remove duplicate loot from an open world activity in Pacifica. Fixed appearance of a junk item. Added loot to an empty loot container behind the sex shop in Corpo Plaza. I actually did find that. That was a weird one. Fixed an issue where some rare items were dropping when they weren't supposed to. Atom Smasher will now drop additional loot besides the access token. Uh, fixed some unopenable loot containers in the control tower in with little help from my friends. Removed legendary mantis blades from Royce's office in the pickup. Added new items and removed duplicate items from vendor's stock. Removed duplicate crafting specs from weapon shops in Vista del Rey, the Glen, Rancho Coronado, Badlands, and Pacifica. Added some food items to the trailer park food vendor's stock. Fixed behavior and visuals of multiple devices. Uh, fixed some vending machines appearance not corresponding to what they have in stock. Optimization related to various devices. Fixed text displayed while scanning machines and reported crime table scraps. Fixed an issue where it wasn't possible to use the numpad next to the garage on the highwaymen. Fixed animations of an enemy distracted by a water sprinkler. <laughs> okay. Uh, fixed untranslated text displayed when scanning a weapon vending machine. Uh, fixed an issue where pachinko machines in Wakako's parlor were missing. Fixed oversized collision boxes of proximity mines and various quests. That's really nice because I ran into that a couple times. Fixed an issue where NPCs weren't reacting to distraction from TV and cameras in the heist. Adjusted appearance of access point antennas. Uh, added missing interaction for an access point in the gig guinea pigs. Fixed lights on some access points. Uh, fixed the oversized collision box for boilers. Removed redundant personal link icon from non-interactive device and gig severance package. Removed a redundant scanning component from shelves in hide access points. NPCs killed by car elevator will no longer clip with it or pop on pop up on its surface. Uh, fixed untranslated text displayed on the screen of confession booth. Hologram decorations will no longer have collisions. Fixed untranslated text displayed when scanning a forklift. Fixed an issue in Riders on the Storm and scanning a forklift in the Raffin Ship camp was highlighting an enemy and outside the forklift's reach. Fixed an issue where uploading the Ice Pick Dame into some forklifts located near an assault in progress in Kabuki powered them off. Uh, ceiling turrets will no longer begin firing before facing the target. Taking control of the camera while swimming will no longer break the UI camera view and animations. Remove the laser effect from cameras. After using the Fry Circuits interaction on them, adding sound effects for Fry Circuits interaction used on the camera. Fix an issue where taking control of the turned off cameras could turn them back on. Fixed barbed wire that didn't deal in damage. Added a mission animation when jacking into a device on gig. Old friends. Uh, security cameras will no longer spot V when crouching or hiding behind cover. Thank you. Fixed untranslated text on intercom screen in something blah blah blah. Fixed various issues with elevators. It's no longer possible to get stuck inside an elevator in Mega Building H10. Uh, the elevator in I Fought the Law can no longer be exited when using it to get to the penthouse. Okay. Scanning timing of access authorization in elevators was shortened. Tweaked arrows on the UI panel of an elevator to light up according to its movement direction. Introduced various fixes and improvements towards behavior and reactions of NPCs and living city in general. Turrets should now have a common target with NPCs. Uh, adjusted the NPC's behavior when their car is stolen. That's great. NPCs will no longer react by crouching to every gunshot. Great. Fixed an issue where some NPCs wouldn't run away from combat scenes. Traffic vehicles will now honk after hitting V. Vehicles will no longer get stuck in their position after, upon saving and loading the game while they are in the air. Fixed different quick hacks and scanning related issues. Introduced minor tweaks and improvements. 
fixed FPP camera so it doesn't drop down when starting to scan, improved performance when opening the scanning menus, security cameras with bright circuits no longer be hacked, fixed an issue where available quick hacks could be doubled, added dying animation for NPCs killed with short circuit quick hack, Tiger Claw boss in Pisces can now be hacked during combat, it is now possible to use distraction quick hack in the conference holo table in Octurn, uh, fixed an issue where scanning the NPCs enemy NPC from inside a car could launch the car in the air. Ladders will no longer be displayed as turned on while scanned, which makes a lot of sense. Um, fixed an issue where scanning overlay would remain on screen if the scan was performed while exiting a car. Fixed an issue where scanning regular NCPD officers would display results for max tack. Uh, human names will no longer be displayed above robots and mechs while scanning. Smooth surveillance camera controls while in remote controlling drones. Good, because that was pretty bad. Improved NPC's behavior in combat and fixed various issues related to it. Um, these are all specific to quests. Except this one. It is no longer possible to stun lock cyber psychos by continuously throwing grenades at them as the knockback now presents a delay. Okay. Uh, stadium low drones will now look destroyed after they explode. Um, NPCs will no longer keep hiding in cover after being flanked. Uh, polished grenade trajectory preview for extreme angles. Disabled mirror interactions during combat. Okay. Tweaked and improved some of the player's mechanics. Fixed an issue that blocked double jump during holo calls. That was annoying. Fixed an issue where V could be launched into the air when attempting to jump or climb through terrains throughout Nice City. That's great as well. Bodies dumped in the Thornton Galena ghoul will no longer stick outside the back of the car. Fixed an issue with weapons becoming invisible after selecting them rapidly with mouse scroll button. It's no longer uh, possible to open a trunk of a car while it leaves in Jotaro's body in Gig Monster Hunt. Okay. Added animation for picking up and dumping bodies on vehicle trunks. Fixed an animation of dumping and picking up bodies from vans. It is now possible to stash NPCs in the trunk of Villafort Cortez. Uh, fixed an issue in the Beast in Me city center where Claire's car could be spinning around in circles instead of driving away if the player chose to not go with her to the garage. Players can no longer... Oh wait, I did run into that actually. Players uh, can no longer use frightened NPCs as human shields when a police warrant is applied. Fixed an issue where V was unable to fast climb or slide down ladders. Okay. Fixed minor issues with cyberware. Titanium Bone Cyberware will no longer appear as duplicated at the Wellsprings Ripper Dock, fixing an issue where the name of the Cyberware on cooldown wasn't displayed. Adjusted functionality of some mods. Deadeye Clothing Mod now works properly. Uh, Panacea and Super Insulator Clothing Mods will now protect players against EMP grenades. Alright. Stability and performance across platforms. This is some pretty big stuff here. Uh, this section discusses changes that enter all the platforms, but many of them make a bigger difference on last generation consoles and lower performance machines. Multiple performance improvements, including dynamic resolution scaling improvements, thank you, improved frame rate consistency, uh, resulting in fewer hitches and spikes, especially during combat, great, various streaming improvements, including fixed a streaming issue affecting performance in the city center district, okay. Uh, memory optimizations and memory management improvements in various systems, reducing the number of crashes. Numerous crash fixes, including fixed crashes that occurred when loading a save file after the car combat sequence with Arasaka agents. Uh, fixed a crash that occurred when waiting for Thompson before leaving Atlantis in Never Fade Away. Fixed a crash that occurred after turning off and on the crowds on minimap option and settings multiple times. I didn't know about that. UI. The UI has been tweaked a lot. Um, as you guys can see on the scroll bar on the right, we are about halfway through the patch notes. So I was not joking. Lots of stuff. All right. User interface. Delamain's image will no longer get stuck on holo calls when V leaves the car too fast after completing Epistrophe uh, Badlands. Item tooltip will no longer disappear if its content is too long. Fixed various typos in subtitles, shards, quests, weapon descriptions, added a text message received after failing Epistrophe North Oak by leaving the Delmain cab, changed back the name of the fast travel point near V's apartment to Mega Building H10, removed some items labeled as none without proper icons from the inventory, 
The on hover menu with multiple with multitude of mods on an item in inventory will now show stats properly. Fixed an issue where male variants of the VR tutorial were in Polish for Brazilian Portuguese language version. Uh, black market battery mod description will now display strings with item attributes properly. Drink some coffee here. <sighs> Fixed an issue where the Contagion quick hack button was missing and its icon outside of the inventory. Status effects icon of the cool cold blood perk now looks like a snowflake. Punk dual layer tank top will now be visible in the inventory when equipped. Added a loading screen tooltip informing about fast forward settings. Uh, fixed the Galena Gecko vehicle's name next to the buy vehicle prompt. Image in the second message from Nancy Hartley and holding out on killing in the name of will now be displayed properly. Adjusted wording in the crafting skill progression reward relating to upgrade cost reduction. The image displaying Mackinac MTL1 in the call vehicle menu will now match with the car's model. Removed debug strings from the good, the bad, and the ugly perks tooltip. Icon grouping artifacts will no longer get detached from their respective locations on the map when zooming in and out. When stamina meter is depleted, the appropriate icon will now appear next to the health bar instead of the overhead icon. Villefort Alvarado V4F 570 delegates description will now correctly state that the drive is rear wheel. Okay. The period of the possible occurrence of the description of synaptic accelerator in the tooltip will now display a proper value when playing in Polish. Uh, fist description in the weapon wheel will now display an appropriate item type. Uh, fixed text in the shard about the Chiba 11 district. Opening photo mode and a vendor menu in quick succession will no longer result in freezing the game. Uh, gold iconic loot items will now be displayed on the minimap, fixed an instance where hit markers and kill confirmation weren't visible when destroying enemy turrets. Uh, fixed enemy markers using the incorrect color on unaware enemies, they will now be yellow instead of red. Fixed an issue when, when RAM recovery rate is below 0 0.50 will not be displayed correctly. Fixed an issue where the disassemble item button was displayed incorrectly. Fixed an issue where the buttons on switching mods warning were not working as intended. Fixed the non-functional hinted keys when breaching protocol removed redundant input hints on the cyber deck panel. Ugh. All right, on to graphics, audio, and animation. A uh, reinforced composite lined rocker full top is now properly aligned with V's legs, fixed an issue where the monowire could slightly dislocate male V's arms and clip through clothes, fixed an issue in the heist where Flathead's case could be float outside the hotel room in Compeki Plaza, blocking the doorway. Uh, fixed an issue where changing music volume and sound settings affected car radio alongside with the background music, I did notice that one, thank you guys. Fixed an issue where Takamura's voice was doubled while talking to V in the van on Down in the Street. Fixed an issue where some net running suits clipped with female V's legs and male V's pants. Uh, fixed an issue with the running animation after jumping on downward or upward slopes. Uh, fixed dust fixed dust particles, which were sometimes incorrectly displayed. Um, character's skin will no longer become too bright in dark areas. In the information, Smasher Shadow will no longer appear in the elevator. Okay, whatever. Fixed Arasaka soldiers spawning on player's site when going back upstairs to save Takamura in Search and Destroy. Okay. Environment and levels. Fixed various map holes in Watson City Center, Westbrook, Haywood, and Santo Domingo. Fixed faulty pathing for vehicles on City Center Ring Road. Uh, fixed multiple places where the player's character could get stuck permanently. Thank you so much. Fixed multiple issues with disappearing environments, multiple issues with objects popping in on player's sight. Uh, GPS and Biotechnica flats will no longer lead players to unreachable areas. Quests. Rearrange shards into correct categories. Fixed an issue where calls to quest NPCs would abruptly end, making the NPC appear in other calls and potentially breaking other holocalls from the NPC. 
Fixed an issue where interrupted holo call would resume along with another call which would make an NPC appear in other calls and break the next holo call from that NPC. I did run into that issue, and uh, that's, that's good they fixed that. And then a, they just list a bunch of quests where they have like quest specific <laughs> fixes. Um, I'm not going to read all those because there are spoilers in there, but uh, pretty much most of the quests in the game are listed. So, open world. Fixed an issue allowing multiple debrief holo calls from fixers to play at once, which would lead to a blocked completion of various gigs. Uh, we continue working on visual issues related to gigs stuck in the journal and note that the latter won't prevent district achievements from unlocking. Uh, removed redundant loot from the body in the Ferris wheel. Uh, fixed an issue where Quadro Type 66 could be destroyed before buying it, blocking the progression of the buy vehicle quest and possibly completion of the auto jock achievement. Fixed an issue in a shootout in Wellsprings where enemies were immortal because the trigger area was too small. Uh, and then, once again, they list like most of the gigs in the game where there are specific fixes. Again, not going to go through those because there are a lot and uh, spoilers. Alright, cinematic design. Fixed an issue causing NPCs to not look at V during various scenes. Fixed an exploit where player was granted a unity pistol after each save and load. These facial animations while looking at the mirror can now be played properly. Uh, will now be played pro properly, sorry. Fixed an issue where Rogue was spawning next to the player after calling her and asking about Adam Smasher. Fixed an issue where some NPCs would stop performing animations after a longer gaming session. Fixed multiple issues with NPCs mounting vehicles incorrectly. Fixed various issues where NPCs could be placed incorrectly and clipped through objects after loading a saved game. Fixed an issue that could cause NPC animations to be played in the wrong spot in various quests. Fixed an issue where Jackie would spawn in the player's eyes during half-year montage. Fixed an issue where NPCs' appearances got randomized when looking away. And fixed an issue where quests and scenes would progress before the loading screen disappeared. And then a ton of quests and gigs where things, again, specific things were adjusted. Miscellaneous. A gift from Judy can now be found in V's apartment after player receives a text about it and completing her romance side quest, which is great because I never got that thing because of that specific bug. Fix some story inconsistency in radio broadcasts and also welcome addition. Fix the blackout effect persisting during Love Like Fire when using certain language settings. Alright, PC specific. Fix the issue where tutorial tu tool tips, tutorial tool tips weren't correctly displayed on 8K screens. Because I'm sure that applied to people. Fixed an issue <laughs> causing game to crash if save thumbnail was corrupted. Uh, fixed toggling windowed and full screen modes with the Alt Enter shortcut. Is now possible to exit locked scanning overlay by pressing Tab added a more compact PC version of the mouse cursor, and console specific. Inner Dead Zone setting will now be applicable to the game menus, PlayStation NPCs will no longer speak after being killed, which is great, I ran into that a lot. Improved streaming of City Lights, also great. Overwriting a save game where there's insufficient memory space will no longer corrupt the save, great. Masks and tubes inside the barn in the hunt will no longer be invisible. Great. Rogue will no longer clip through Johnny at the end um, and will hold the glass correctly in Ghost Town. Fixed an issue in the rescue when loading a save in front of the police blockade resulted in NCPD officer not starting dialogue blocking progress. Fixed an issue on PS4 where the meeting scene with Judy and Dolls and Pisces would start, wouldn't start would start properly. Xbox fixed an issue in a cool metal fire where a part of the scene in Cassius Ryder's clinic could be cut off before the fade out. Fixed an issue where weapons were equipped to a wrong slot when assigning them from the backpack. And many more. And that, my friends, is all of the patch notes. Um without the specific uh, spoilery stuff in under half an hour, just barely. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a massive update. 
I'm gonna once again be streaming this every other stream for a while. That is... Uh... Until... Probably, uh... Tales of Arise comes out, and that's the only thing I play for a while. <laughs> so, um... Yeah. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Hope you found it helpful. Or entertaining. Or whatever. Or maybe you just wanted to hear me uh, list things off for a half hour straight. I don't know. So I'm gonna go. Thank you all for being here. And a very special thank you to our Farts and Crap Show members. Well, Cranky Gamer, Novel Stracconis, and Retro HD, thank you guys so much for checking out the join button down below, choosing to support the show a bit more directly. It greatly helps out. And until next time, everybody, take care, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.